Well, I hope you're dressed up appropriately because it's the Romeo and Juliet wedding scene as we continue our series of translating and analysing the entire play of Romeo and Juliet. Act 2, Scene 6 takes place in Friar Lawrence's cell. Starts off with Friar Lawrence talking to Romeo. So smile the heavens upon this holy act that after hours with sorrow chidest not. A little bit of foreshadowing here, which I'll go into in the next video, but he's basically saying, I hope that the heavens are happy with this marriage, so bad things don't result from it. Romeo says, Amen, Amen, but come what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death, do what he dare. It is enough I make but call her mine. So Romeo, in his uh, classic sort of stupidity here, is saying, I agree, I agree, but whatever bad thing happens, it can't outdo the happiness that I feel after seeing Juliet for just one minute. Join us together in marriage, Friar, and death can do what it likes. As long as she is mine, I am happy. Friar Lawrence says, these violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which as they kiss, consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore love moderately, long love doth so, too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. So basically he's saying, you know, just like gunpowder and flame uh, explodes in an instant. It can be like that when people miss, uh, meet and kiss. The, and he's saying the sweetest honey is horrible if you eat too much of it. You know, the nicest thing you can eat, uh, Domino's Texas barbecue pizza, is horrible if you eat 15 of them. Therefore, love in moderation, long-lasting love does this. Love that is too quick is just as bad. As love that is too slow so you know this this is kind of contradictory advice because he's about to perform a marriage between two people who met about 24 hours ago um, and he's saying you know but take it slow so a bit bizarre and there's uh, an analysis in my ebook on the character of the friar so follow the link in the description to pick that up everything you see on the screen today comes from my ebook and please do buy a copy because it makes it all worthwhile for me, all this 50 videos that I've made. Juliet comes in and then, of course, we have, here comes the lady. Oh, so light a foot will never wear out the everlasting flint. A lover may bestride the gossamer that idles in the wanton summer air and yet not fall. So light is vanity. So this is quite an interesting bit of foreshadowing where he looks at Juliet and says, here she comes and She's walking so lightly, her, her footsteps are so gentle and delicate that it's clear to me she'll never survive the difficult road of life. Those in love can walk on spider webs that float in the summer air and not fall. That is how surreal love is. Juliet says, good evening to my ghostly confessor. Good evening, my confessor. And the friar says, Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. So you don't need to thank me for anything. Romeo will thank me enough for both of you. Juliet says, as much to him, else his thanks too much. So I shall be grateful too, so he doesn't thank you too much. And Romeo says, ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blaze on it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbour air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. So here's Romeo going back to his sort of poetic language and basically saying, I'm so happy and if you're as happy as I am, you're better with words than I am, so please tell me how happy we will be in our future together. And that's quite an interesting part of the play where Romeo sort of um, acquiesces and says, you know, you are better than me at speaking. So you say it. This is Juliet, the 13-year-old. We're never told how old Romeo is, but we get the sense he's a little bit older. I always think about 16, maybe, but who knows. Juliet says, Conceit, more rich in matter than in words, brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess. So in other words, my imagination is bigger than I can put into words. 
for the love I have within me for you, Romeo, is so huge that I can't express it. And then the friar says, Come, come with me, and we will make short work, for by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. So the friar is basically saying, you two are so in love with each other, I'm not going to leave you alone because you'll just jump on each other. So I'm going to marry you so that then, you know, you can jump on each other and it won't be a sin in the eyes of the church. And that's the end of the scene, which is quite interesting. You think you might see the whole sort of wedding um, vows and that sort of stuff, but we don't. They are married off stage, as it were. And this Act 2, Scene 6, sees the end of Act 2. So please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, the next video will come tomorrow. Hello everybody and welcome to this video, my continuing series on Romeo and Juliet, where I analyse Act 2, Scene 6. Now rather than do it visually, I thought I'd actually just show you a sample of the ebook for this video and to give you a sort of idea of what you can find in there. It's £1.99 to buy. Please do follow the links in the description. So Act 2, Scene 6 begins with yet more foreshadowing as Friar Lawrence hopes that the heavens will, not, will smile upon the marriage of Romeo and Juliet. He worries that they chide us not, which foreshadows the tragic events that will follow in just the next scene, Act 3, Scene 1. Romeo takes it one step further with the challenge, love devouring death, do what he dare. In other words, death, do what you like. And finally, the friar foreshadows Juliet's death when he comments that so light a foot will never wear out that everlasting flint. His words suggest that Juliet is too dainty to survive the difficult road of life, and Shakespeare's use of structure means that this is the perfect place to foreshadow all of this doom that will soon fall on our title characters. So Aristotle, and we talked about him earlier in the video series and the ebook, came up with some of the earliest ideas about dramatic structure in tragedy and he felt that drama fell into three pieces. Now in the 19th century, building on the work of Aristotle, the German novelist Gustav Freytag proposed that all five act plays follow the same format and you can see it on the screen. There's an exposition in Act 1 which introduces the setting and main characters. Act 2 is the rising action where a series of events keep the reader interested. Act 3 is the climax where the main character comes face to face with a problem and has a choice to make. Act 4 is the falling action where the problem unravels and the hero either wins or loses. And Act 5 is the denouement, the fallout from the way the characters deal with the climax. Well, if we apply Freytag's theory to the two um, acts that we have now studied, we'll see the following. Act 1, the exposition, is really where... Um, we learn that the Montague family and the Capulet family are enemies and we have the fight in uh, Act 1, Scene 1 and we just discover that they are at war with each other. The rising action in Act 2 will be Romeo and Juliet falling in love and getting married. Yes, they met in Act 1, Scene 5, but the um, majority of the, the romance and, of course, the marriage takes place in Act 2. So with that in mind, we know that we are about to come to the climax of the play, okay? Because we're in Act 2, Scene 6 now. So everybody who knows anything about plays would be in the audience thinking, now is going to come the big climax. Something is going to happen in this next act that is the big moment where our hero Romeo comes face to face with a decision that he has to make. And of course, all of the foreshadowing in Act 2, Scene 6 of death of most of the characters is a worrying hint about what that climax might be. So Shakespeare here is using the literary device of foreshadowing prior to the major act of Act 3 to increase the tension even further. Just a short video, but please do subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video.